Get ready, America, for this is the best of Destination Small Town, a Cluck TV production featuring the shows that have taken Sweet Swine County by storm. The reality hit, The Real Housewives of Sweet Swine County, Sweet Swine's favorite music show, Backstage at the Commune, the tastefully done cooking segment, Cooking It Up with Betty, the always zany soap opera, As the Corn Grows, and of course, the wildly popular talk shows that share what's happening inside and outside Sweet Swine County. Which shows will you be seeing today? Stay tuned and find out right after the break. This program has been made possible by SweetSwineScoop.com, the online magazine that keeps Sweet Swine County citizens informed on what's happening. For if it happens in Sweet Swine County, it's news to us. Get ready, because now you can watch a full of fun daytime talk show that shares the latest and greatest news about the people, places, and events found all over our story country. The Women of Sweet Swine County, hosted by three sassy ladies that tell small town stories with big town attitude. Now, on this station and the web. Get ready, America, because you're about to see the best of the Cocklebur Morning Show, Sweet Swine County's number one morning talk show. Our Story Productions presents the Cocklebur Morning Show, where we weed out the big stories from throughout Sweet Swine County with Bobby Ray and Sally Sue. Oh, thank you, thank you, and welcome to another Cockleburr Morning Show. Yes. Bobby Ray, I am so excited about this segment. We have great guests. Yes, we do. Yes, it's we just, do. It just will be yep. so fun. Yep. But I know that you're dying to tell us about your <sighs> spectacular weekend. I went on a tour of the cabins the on, yes, on Swine Lake. Really? Well, they really weren't on Swine Lake. They were about a mile away from Swine oh, Lake, okay. but, but that was close. <laughs> uh, you know, the first cabin we stopped at was Cousin John's. Okay. And of course, you know, he wanted to charge a cover charge to get in. Did you pay it? No, we decided we'd just walk around looking through the windows. And it looked like a pretty cool place. Cousin yeah, John, you know, yeah. these guys digs together there yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Um, the other place we went to, which was just outstanding, uh, was Lawyer Ed's. Remember, he was our guest oh, last yes, week? Yep, yes. yep. I got a newsflash for you. He's got more than one duck. Really? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I thought he only had one. No, he's got more than one. I Should we I call saw... the number and find well, out? Well, I don't know. I tried that number last week, and it yep. didn't, it it didn't, didn't, go, didn't go where I thought it was going to go. Have to leave yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of, it was bad. Yeah, okay. And then the highlight of the tour uh -huh. was going to Lonesome Ron's place. Oh. He's that country singer oh, and yes. yodeler from oh, Mankato. Man. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Oh. I'm here to tell oh. you. He bought a fixer upper from Ronnie Silage. Yep. Oh, He's done okay. a lot of work okay. on it. Sure. And um, <laughs> he picked that house up for exchange barter, more or less, with okay. Ron Silage for guitar lessons. Oh, I didn't really? know Ron played guitar. Well, I think he probably wants to, um, you know, play for Prairie Ann. He wants to be a, oh, oh, you know, yeah, put his poems a little to music. picker. I yeah. never thought about that. You You're know, very, you know, you are so smart. Oh, I got to oh. keep on the edge, you know? Yep. Anyway, the tour lasted about three and a half hours. I mean, it was quite, really? it was a great tour, yeah. Of course, wow. you know, there were, there were hours spent, three hours spent listening to the uh, songs from Lonesome Ron. Oh, well, yeah. And oh, a half an hour looking at the cabins. <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. Oh, it was, it was, it was oh, great. Wow, I'm telling you, it was great. It was, it was one of the more incredible weekends oh, I've had. Oh, it sounds yep. really thrilling. I loved it. Oh, I bet it was. Fresh air, music, mm -hmm. people. Yep. Wow. It was marvelous. Oh, great. Well, I wouldn't swim in that lake, but. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I you don't really, you know, it's a rash. So you oh, do okay. Yeah. I'll remember that. Yeah, don't go there. Well, Sally Sue, it's time for us to bring out our special oh, guest yes. this week. And I'm telling you, they are special. They're from the town known as Ham Hock Hollow. <gasps> yes. All the they way. are Sweet Swine County's oh. own Lars and Inga. Oh. Welcome. Hello. 
welcome, Inga. Hi, welcome. Nice welcome, Lars. Nice, nice to see you. Hi, nice to meet you. Welcome, Lars and yes, Inga. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So it was nice. so nice to be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, we understand that you retired a few months ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, really? we did. Oh. Yeah, it was like several months ago now, I'd say. Inga, he says, we've been in the sign business now here for 25 years. Don't you think it's time we retire? Didn't you say that, Lars? Yeah. Is there, is there any chance that we might be able to convince you to get us a new sign? Look at that. Look at it. Isn't I mean, that bad? We're not, pathetic. I'm not Tommy and oh, she's not it. Sarah. No. Oh, that's yeah. pathetic. That's bad. Poor it's been taste. A long time. Well, I long tell you, Lars is so good with making really? the signs. You know? Really? He started out small with the business. Oh. Yeah, and he started out with a, a small sign, I'd say. Yeah. yeah, small, nice, hand painted sign. Open. Oh, <laughs> it was so lovely. Lars did such a nice job. Wow. Yeah, quickly, and, you know, we followed it up with a little bit more, you know, adventure, uh -huh. some kind mm -hmm. of uh -huh. the next <coughs> side. Uh -huh. Oh, so the, the, the best uh -huh. side that got the most calls from everybody, I gotta say, out to lunch. You should have seen them knocking <laughs> down the doors when we got that. Oh, I three boy, words. Three words. Three words. That had to be a pretty big sign. Wow. Wow. Twenty five mm -hmm. years, you know. Oh, then we yes, 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 yes. It's time to do something yes. different. So mm -hmm. we yes. retired. Nope. So now, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing now? Uh, oh, well, I could tell you, Sally Sue. Yes. <laughs> Lars and I were pretty much. Uh, Living on the edge. Really? <laughs> oh no! My car sells one of these little traveling homes. Okay. Know, 1969 kind of a fixer upper oh. kind, you know. Fairly new. And he's so good with that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So oh, hit the road. Time that that time of the show when we have to say goodbye. We would very much like to thank our special guests Lars and Inga. Yes. Learned so much from you today. Yeah. We'd also like to thank my cousin Jeff for broadcasting oh. another great show from the passenger yes, seat. Yes, yes, So until the next morning when the cockle burrs are up, and we are too, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. This program is made possible in part by Swine Tales Publication, the proud publisher of Sweet Swine County Maps and Plat Books. Now publishing authors from throughout Sweet Swine County. Swine Tail Publications is now making plans for their next book tour and they may be held in these small towns with the release of Earl Steps Out My Story by Earl Silo. Born and raised in Sweet Swine County he never saw any reason to leave. After all what could be better than good old Split Hoof? Oh sure he's considered going to New Pork for the annual running of the pigs festival. He said he does enjoy a good pig race now and again. But when it came right down to it, he just couldn't make himself get all gussied up and drive 10 miles to see some other farmer's pigs race. Then he met Cassidy Davis, and she convinced him that he needed to get out of Sweet Swine and, and step out. She held his hand, so to speak, which got him out of Sweet Swine, but into hot water with his best girl, Clarice. But that's a whole nother story. Each of these towns are being considered for a book signing because of the information found on the best source about small towns of the Midwest. To learn about these towns, visit DestinationSmallTown.com. This program has been made possible by the Swine Song Commune, where musicians, artists, and hippie types live together and share their passions. To learn more, visit the online magazine at SweetSwineScoop.com. Get ready, because just when you thought you'd gotten the cockleburs out of your overalls, they're now on TV. That's right, this is one weed you won't want to pull. The Cockleburr Morning Show with hosts who deliver a mix of news, entertainment, and information about the communities throughout our story country. Now on this station and the web. Live from Sweet Swine County, where every day is sweet. It's Split Hoof tonight with Billy Gates and the Broken Window Band. I'm Earl Silo, 
And here is Sweet Swain County's own Cousin John. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our first initial showing of Split Hoof tonight. Thank you, thank you. We're brought to you live about two miles north of the roving metropolis of Split Hoof in our brand new studios. You know, it's kind of a shame that my bank had to foreclose on the Grange Hall just to get this. You know, I know a lot of you have been here, but a pretty neat transformation into this state-of-the-art studios, wouldn't you think? Thank you, thank you. You know what, now, and join me in welcoming our band. I mean, we got a group of all-stars here that come as far away as from High Horse and Cornrow and even as far away as Shallow Falls. Please join me in welcoming Billy Gates and the Broken Windows Band. Thank you, thank you. And of course, we've got my good friend and sidekick, Earl Seidel. How are we doing tonight, Earl? Never better, Cousin John. Perfect. You know, it's kind of funny. Earl invited me out to his parents' place the other day. Oh, Clarence and uh, Opal. Clarence and Opal Silo, you know, they're kind of some of the biggest pig farmers around town here. Well, we were out there, and Opal and Clarence, they were just kind of leaning on the, one of the pig, uh, the pig pens there. And Opal was musing a little bit, you know, it was going to be their golden wedding anniversary. She couldn't figure out what to do, so she says, Clarence, here's what we're going to do. We're going to roast us up a hog and have a big party. Clarence, he pulled the weed out of his mouth, and he's thinking a little bit, and he goes, you know, Opal, I don't see why the pig should have to suffer for something that happened 50 years ago. <laughs> well, let me tell you what, we got a great show ahead of us tonight, a great guest. We're going to have a whole lot of fun. We're going to learn a little bit about how some of the people from Sweet Swine County here are going out and finding some really nice places in southern Minnesota. So why don't we go out and take a look at a little bit of that, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Charles Cornrault, and you probably know me from the TV show Tuesday Afternoon. Well, enough about me. Join my fellow celebrities as we take a look at small town living at its best. In the county of Martin, the town of Fairmont, Minnesota, you will find Our Story Productions. In 2007, Jeff and Denise Rouse had a goal to produce a television program that would highlight the businesses, organizations, events, and people of their community. After hiring a local production company and recruiting friends and community members to volunteer, they began one of the most unique programs on TV. Because of their unique and, dare we say, corny programming, the show gained popularity. With their popularity, other communities began to contact them to see if they could become part of the Our Story family. New programs were added, additional volunteers were recruited, the Our Story team discovered some of the best stories were coming out of some of the smallest towns. So the decision was made to feature as many of the small towns as possible, no matter how small. They believe that every town has a story, and they all need to be told. Today, with staff that included over 60 volunteers, the television show Our Story, Small Town Living at Its Best, spotlights over 225 small communities in four states and has told over 1,500 stories about the communities in the upper Midwest. Each show is aired in over 1 million households on cable television, as well as on their website, YouTube, and Facebook, and yes, even Pinterest. Our Story Productions continues to receive requests to join Our Story family and welcomes communities to email them to have their businesses, organizations, events, or people featured. Our Story Productions is proud to be sharing the lifestyle that we share in the small towns of the Upper Midwest, for it's not just the past, but the present that becomes Our Story. What do you say we bring out our first guest? That's a good idea, Cousin John. Who is our guest today? Well, you know old uh, Clarice there, she does that little segment, Hidden Away and Not Forgotten. Well, she was traveling around southern Minnesota, and the other day she come and basically kicked the door in on my office. She was just all beside herself, telling me about this guy that we had to have for our first guest. She was up in Renville County, a little town of Morton, and she told me about this guy, and once I heard his story, I decided that needed to be our first guest. So, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Max Prinzing. Thanks, Max. All right. 
Well, Max, hey, we're really glad you could join us here. Uh, they tell me that you've got a, a manufacturing company that's called Prinzing Motor Cars. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what is it that you manufacture? Well, we manufacture classic style automobiles from the, with the 1930s and 40s look with modern running gear. Wow. You know, tell me, how, how did you get started in the business? Well, I had a 70 acre uh, farm in Winthrop, Minnesota, and uh, just had crops, I didn't have animals. So I always wanted a classic car. I wanted a Duesenberg like my grandfather had. Yeah. Yeah, of course, they're a million dollars plus today. You right. Know? So, uh, well, one winter out in the machine shed, I, I uh, decided to make one. Uh, and I, I wanted a Rolls Royce style grill and a Duesenberg type body and uh, Packard style hood vents. So uh, it took about six months to sculpt it and uh, 42 gallons of plaster of Paris. Oh. And then uh, you make the die mold off of that. It was five pieces. We had to cut it in five pieces and then bolt it back together and wax it with a beeswax and make the Kevlar body. I use Kevlar because it's stronger than steel and it won't rust. Right. And uh, it, uh, it's a catalyzed process. You pull it, and pour it, and roll it in there cold and... Uh, when you pour it, you add the uh, catalyst to it, and that heats it up over a period of 10 hours, and it, it cures. And next morning, you unbolt the mold, and you've got the car body. Wow. That's cool. hmm. Well, tell me, Max, who are some of the more famous people that you've uh, made a prinzing car for? Well, we've made uh, a car for uh, singer Neil Diamond and John Denver. And, uh, of course, Denver was from Mankato. He went to Mankato State. Right. And uh, he married a girl there. I think her folks' name was Martel. They had the Holiday House in St. Peter. That's right. Yeah. Anne was her name. And, uh, of course, I was a member of the Holiday uh, House Club there. And uh, he had said he wanted to look at one of my automobiles at buying one. So when he came, I had, uh, to a little town where we were at, uh, I had moved the factory location to another town, a larger location. And I had a little uh, paper there taped on the, on the door that we had moved, but it had uh, blown away. And in that little town, the uh, high school kids and junior high school kids can come home for lunch for a half hour because it's only about six blocks wide. So uh, it was about noon, and uh, uh, he, uh, he couldn't find us, so he went across the street to a house there, and a 15-year-old girl answered the door, and... Of course, he had had a chauffeur-driven limo. He'd flown in in his own jet. He was coming back for Thanksgiving to visit the folks. And anyway, uh, he said, you look just like John Denver. Yeah, he said, uh, that's who I am. <laughs> so he went out to the limo and got a picture and autographed it for her. And uh, she w went back to school and showed it to all the kids, you know, that she had met John Denver. And... Uh, he, uh, he bought a blue car with a, with a rumble seat and extra fuel capacity. So well, where, where have uh, some of your cars been shipped to? Well, we've uh, shipped cars to Switzerland, to Russia, to France, and all over the United States, Hawaii and so on. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Well, which, which one of your cars is your favorite? Well, I like the spirit of Minnesota. I built that in 1978. That was the... Um, first 100% uh, ethanol powered car built in the United States and uh, of course I drove it 6,000 miles across the United States uh, and Ru Senator Rudy Boschwitz he drove it six blocks and the Washington Post newspaper came out and took his picture. What I like about the ethanol of course is that it's homegrown in America and it takes 280 million acres to take care of all the gasoline powered vehicles in America that haven't run on ethanol. Uh, we have 500 million acres that won't grow crops, it's too rocky and so on, but poplar trees will grow there so you can make wood alcohol out of uh, poplar trees in, in all 50 states. So we really have no need for imported oil, we could take care of ourselves. And uh, I just wanted to prove it to people to show them that it could be done and, and today all of our vehicles run on 100% ethanol or uh, 
gasoline or any combination of the two. Anything yeah. in between, so not just the E85 or anything. Just yep. 99.1 or 100 percent. Yep. Doesn't matter. Yep. And we have uh, sensors in the fuel tank that go to the computer because we have a modern drivetrain, even though the car looks, you know, classic. Sure. And uh, uh, it'll just keep running. All you got to do is put the key in and go, you know. And I think we're the only car company in the U.S. that that has that standard. It's not an option. Uh, that's the only way you can buy it is with a multi-fuel engine. So well, what type of cars are you building now? Well, now we're building professional cars for the, the wedding and the funeral industry and special occasions, okay. and, uh, limousines and hearses and so on. And, uh, we built uh, the first art car panel hearse since 1941 when the war broke yeah. out, you know, they quit building sure. cars. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, I guess the first one in 68 years, we delivered that to Arkansas. Mm -hmm. The art cars panel was carved out of wood, which I did, but then we, we made a casting and made the sides out of Kevlar, and that, you know, well, they make bullet-resistant vests out of well, Kevlar. It would be a little easier yeah. to maintain and last a little longer than oh, the wood. Oh, yeah, would last too. a lifetime, yep. So, Max, if, uh, if the folks want to learn more about your business and about your cars, mm -hmm. uh, is there, do you have a website you could go to or something like that? Yes. Holy crap, Earl, that's a good question. Yeah, we do. It's uh, www.prinzingmc.com. Uh, and take a look at it and see what you think and click us an email, your comments, if you will. We appreciate that. Well, that's great. Well, that looks like all the time we got today. Max, really like to thank you for stop, stopping by and being with us today. Time with us, telling us all about your Prinzing motor cars. Uh, once again, folks, I'd like to thank the studio audience for joining us. Don't forget Billy Gates and the Broken Window Band. And join us next time for another great edition of Split Hook Tonight. Good night, everybody. This program is made possible in part by Swine Tales Publications, the proud publisher of Sweet Swine County Maps and Plat Books, now publishing authors from throughout Sweet Swine County. Swine Tales Publication is now making plans for their next book tour and they may be held in these small towns with the release of The Sweet Swine Diaries, a collection of unauthorized biographies by Cassidy Davis, featuring a riveting collection of the exotic, neurotic, chaotic, and even psychotic stories about the lives of the Sweet Swine County ladies. Miss Davis is quoted as saying, I have never seen so many single women with so many problems in my life. Enjoy. Each of these towns and their businesses are being considered to hold a book signing because of the information found on the best source about small towns of the Midwest. To learn about these towns and their businesses, visit DestinationSmallTown.com. This program has been made possible by Purdue University, Sweet Swine County's Institute of Higher Learning, with three classroom trailers that can accommodate up to nine students each. To learn more, visit SweetSwineScoop.com. Our Story Productions presents Cooking It Up With Betty, a saucy look at our story. So, get ready for the one and only Betty Welcome back to another episode of Cooking It Up with Betty. And what a show we have planned for you today with a special recipe, a special guest, and those roving reporters that tell us what's cooking in our story country. So without further ado, let's get started. I have my special guest I'd like to introduce today. He's my boss, and we commonly call him Cousin John. Welcome, Cousin John. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Say, Betty, got a question for you. What the hell happened to your last show? Uh, well, what do you mean? Well, this is supposed to be a cooking show and you cook some jello or something, I don't know. Well, you know, it was one of those things, you know, that I, I was trying for something different, something new and exciting, but you know, um, Elmer was really upset. Really? Yeah. He said the wiring in this place is 30 years out of date. You know, the wiring in your studio? Well, yeah, that's something you got to remember, Betty. This is my studio, and as a matter of fact. You know, you were supposed to provide the appliances and the accoutrements for the kitchen, but this is my place. Well, yeah, I, I forget about that because, you know, it does look like my kitchen with all my favorite cookbooks and everything, but it's the wiring and the hookups. 
they're out of date. Elmer practically closed us down. He reported us. You know, I'm down to no refrigerator, no stove. You know, it's really hard to do a cooking show with no stove and no refrigerator because the wiring is out of date. When are you going to get that fixed? Well, you know, we'll talk about that a little later. Don't, don't you have some place that, you know, you can f find us some place to eat? Well, you know, the re roving reporters. Now, you, you know about them. Sure. Yes, yes. Uh, they're out in the countryside, and they're looking at the little restaurants, the big restaurants. They're finding out what's cooking in our story country, and they will report back to us. Let's go to a couple of those reports Let's right, do that now, right now, and you can find out what's cooking. Lenny left over here, filing my latest report of what's cooking. I and my fellow reporters have discovered incredible nightclubs and historic bars in small towns. Now you can learn what we've learned about nightlife options in small towns of the Midwest on ClockTV.com. Boy, I tell you what, that was good. That's making me hungry. What are we doing today here? Well, we're having a nice relish tray today. A what? With a relish tray with some very special dip oh, and some come on. We well, want some real food, not rabbit food. John, have you forgotten that Elmer has closed us down? I'm working out of an ice chest, so I have fresh fruits and vegetables and homegrown pickles that I win blue ribbons at the fair. That's what I have to work with. You have to get this fixed if you want me to cook. That plow's going to be the death of me yet. Well, you know, if you'd like to help, you could peel a carrot and get us started here. Seriously? You want me to peel a carrot? Well, you know, it's... Do these look like the hands that peel carrots? Uh, <laughs> why don't you have some wine and just settle down here? All right. Come on. We'll, we'll, you have a little bit of wine and I'll tell them about my special dip. Don't come up here on the floor. Okay. This is a new winery up from near High Horse and it's uh, a new wine. That's not I, I kind of like it. That's and the dip bad. that I made today to go with the veggies is kind of a little spicy dip. It's got some hot pepper in it along with the sour cream. Why don't you try that? What do you think? Mm. Oh, folks, this is really good. Even though it's not cooked, it's really good, but this is even making me more hungry. Can we go look at <laughs> some more places to well, eat? Well, yes, we have some more reports. Let's go to a report while I finish doing this. Oh, Abby Appetite here, head reporter for the What's Cooking team, making a list for my reporters to do stories on about the restaurants, cafes, diners, supper clubs, and bakeries in the small towns of the Midwest. You can see them all on clucktv.com. Hey, let's pick one out and go there together. Remember, you'll be traveling with an appetite. Abby Appetite. So you know, that, that, that is pretty good. And this wine isn't bad either. You know what? This is really making me hungry. I'm gonna go get something to eat. Well, Folks, I'm out of here. Listen, don't ever have plow back on this show again. Oh. Thanks, guys. Oh, 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 okay, I will not have Elmer fall back. John left without telling me when he was going to fix that wiring. Oh, well, we're almost out of time anyhow, I guess. Folks, if you would like a copy of any of the recipes, please send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Recipes. Cooking it up with Betty, care of Cluck Television. Please let me know which recipe you're asking for. And now I'm going to be saying goodbye. Uh, thanks to our special guest, John. <laughs> our roving reporters, and you, my home audience. Thanks. Come back and see us again on Cooking It Up with Betty. Bye-bye. This program has been made possible by The Daily Boar. This sometimes daily newspaper reports the news the residents of Sweet Swine County want to know. Also now featured online at sweetswinescoop.com. Destination Small Town, a KLUK-TV production. The challenge to share what's happening in small towns of the Midwest. The stories are real. The pace is swift. With tourists, celebrities, and reporters from Sweet Swine County covering stories about businesses and points of interest. Destination Small Town, in living color on the web.